Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have a German whiskey. Westland Single Malt Whiskey Single Barrel Edition. This is from the town of Leutz. L-O-I-T-Z. Sorry, Z because most of you are American. And this is actually the peat capital of the state of Four Pomoriana. Wow, I mispronounced my own I, my own state in English because I never say Four Um <laughs> I can speak it in German, but I'm not very good because it's Mecklenburg for Pomorinia. Um, now, this is um, a whiskey that is, even in Germany, very, very rare. This was given to me as a gift. The tiny little bottle. I like this. And the bottle actually hand signed with a number. So this is bottle number 12,017. Like, because each bottle is a unique um, entity. And uh, 9 euros, which is about $12. 0 0.5 CL, the big bottle, is about 60 euros, which would be about 70 at something dollars. And uh, this is actually made, there's a river that flows through the area. It's called the Pina, P-E-E-N-E, -E -E, Pina. And there's actually a moor region there where they actually used to um, take the peat and send it off to the big cities of Berlin and Hamburg and Dresden and Leipzig and so on um, be up until the Second World War. And so this is actually a brewery that decided to start making spirits as well. So this is 46%. This is a three-year-old whiskey that has been in an ex-bourbon barrel. Now, the interesting thing is with single barrel releases, and that's all they do, is that the one barrel could be fantastic, the next barrel is good, the next barrel is well, I don't know, and the next one will be great again. And I personally think I have something that's great um, for a single barrel release that is three years old. Now, my I, I've done a lot of German whiskeys in the past, and some of them have actually made it onto my German channel. My rule that I now have is I'm only going to do good German whiskeys. I would say four out of five of my German whiskeys that I taste online are not good enough to make it onto my English channel. And so this is an important factor here because even in Germany, you can only buy this online or you go into the distillery if you're somewhere between Hamburg and Berlin, uh, more like between Berlin and Dresden, a little bit over to the left, you'll go here. I, I've traveled all over Europe. I'm sorry, Europe as well, all over Germany. And I've never made it to this little part of the town because the Autobahn is in the north and in the east and in the south. And this is just in the middle. No one actually goes there unless you have relatives or you're on vacation. Great place to vacation, by the way. All right. So the nose. Now, Whiskey Jason, may you remember, is not a big fan of the peat. Now, absolutely contrary to Bart from um, Scotch Test Dummies, I do not like peat. And yet, there is peat in here, and it's actually almost enjoyable. Woo! Am I going more and more to the dark side? Maybe. I think it has to do with the type of peat. You've had Kilhoman peat, you've had Adbeck peat, you've had Lagavulin peat, and you've had um, Lafroig peat. And you know that they taste different. And this peat also tastes different. This is, now imagine you had a nice pine tabletop, and you took your soldering iron and you touched that surface and you burnt that wood. You're branding that wood for half of a second. That's the type of aroma I get here. It's a pine wood that's a little bit burnt. For us woodworkers out there, imagine um, you actually have um, your um, actually molding the surface and um, you're cutting a groove and um, or you're taking your um, your saw, your circular saw, and you're cutting a two by four, and and then that burnt smell of that wood. That's what I'm getting here. 
and is a lot different than the cold smoke from an ashtray or from iodine or medicine or like a fireplace. It's not mesquite, mesquite. It's actually more of a burnt pine. And that's something I kind of can identify with for some reason. And that's what I get. And it's a very fruity, it's a nice vanilla, van vanillic, oh, that's very German, a vanilla um, note as well with a little bit of the barley forward moment. Now there's only one major fault with this whiskey and you're going to probably want to stone me. The major fault is it's actually filled at 46%. They want it to be non-chilled filter, and if a dumb American comes by and throws in an ice cube and it turn cloudy, they don't want that. And so it's actually filled at 46% and non-chilled filtered. The only problem is it's too hot. It's spicy. It just burns my mouth up. And um, they should have bottled it, personal opinion, Whiskey Jason, at 42%. Because when I put water in this, it turns into something magnificent. Before, it's just like, oh, that's young, that's hot, that's a little bit, nah. and then when I put the 42, lower it down, it's like, oh, this is really nice, it's cream, creamy, it's oily, it's smooth, it's actually what we want in a good um, whiskey. If you would take it, for example, with uh, from Signatory, a single cask, uh, maybe a 10, maybe a 12-year-old scotch that was just in a, um, I don't know, the uh, Milton, um, um, a Middle Duff. Uh, I just combined the two with each other. Let's say we're going to take um, the um, Glen Scotia. Yeah, so, um, or we could take actually here, where's my other bottle? Um, here we go. We could take um, Middle, Middle, M Milton Duff. That's what I wanted to say the whole time. We're going to take Milton Duff, maybe a 10 year old, maybe a 12 year old, single barrel. Um, Ex bourbon cask, and you compare it to this, you're going to get very, very similar moments, and that's what we need. Um, we need to have a comparison, and so what I'm going to do oh, I can actually do this, I'm going to compare, which I didn't do in my German video. So you get something special, Ooh, that's good. So the specialness is actually we have here a single barrel, um, first fill bourbon barrel, um, distilled 2011 and um, bottled 2017 from the Middleton Duff Distillery. So it's six years old and it's still at 62.1%, which means I'm going to take it down, 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 down. Good. And this, we're also gonna take down just a little bit down to, as I said, from 46% down to 42%. So I know we're gonna take this down a little bit more, good. So we have about both around the 42, 43, 44%. I'm not a scientist. I'm not always getting it perfectly right here. And here I actually have the little bit, that little trace of those, um, the pint of the burn pine, pine. And here I just have the char, char a tiny little bit and vanilla and the malt. So they're very, very similar. Mmm. I really like this. I don't know why. Um, that 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 peat, the German peat, the Pina peat from the Pina River, really does a nice little supporting role. The malt's there, the vanilla is there, the alcohol is there. It's a simple yet very nice whiskey. Over here, our um, single barrel from the. Barrel Yeas is sold at a combination design from Barrel and Sommule. Um, oh, I mispronounced that. Um, what is, um, by the um, the Whiskey Vault, we have Rex and we have Daniel, and da Daniel's a level three sommelier. And that's also a Barrel Yeah design. So, ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. This is not as good as this, which is amazing. Here I start getting a little bit of the, um, that, yeah, I'm getting tannins. I'm getting a little bit of wood that's not perfect, even though it's only seven years old, six years old, to be honest. Um, and the distillery character is not really that fantastic. On the other hand, over here from um, Westland, 
I must admit that I really do like the smoothness of this. And that's what usually happens when beer brewers start making whiskey, that they've actually understood the elements that are needed to make that wort. And then they just distill it and um, double distilled as far as I know. It doesn't say anything else about that, about how many times it's been distilled. It just says here, single cask and always um, a little bit of a different thing. So I'm going to give this actually a C plus. Wow. Jason's giving a German whiskey with German peat a C plus. Value for money, I'm going to give it a C minus. Over here, um, a normal bottle of German whiskey costs about 60 euros, about 70, 75 dollars for a half liter. That's just the standard price, unfortunately. Of course, scotch is much, 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 much cheaper. And you can buy it for a much better price. But um, German whiskey is distilled a barrel a day. Maybe a, maybe um, not even, let's say, we're going to do maybe 200 barrels a year. And so it's a very exclusive type of product. And therefore, um, it's not something that is a very high demand for it. This is more of a souvenir you take from the shop. And as I said, I'm the second whiskey YouTuber in Germany to even cover this at all. There's only one other person that's done this, and this was given to me as a gift. Otherwise, I would not have known about it. So, wow, German whiskey, a C plus, and the value for money, C minus. As I said, 60 euros for 0.5 liters, otherwise just not justified. Thank you very much for watching. My question of the day is... What is your favorite bourbon cask whiskey? Now, not bourbon. <laughs> so it's got to be a scotch. It's got to be in French whiskey. It's got to be something that's used a bourbon cask at least once. What is your favorite bourbon cask whiskey? It's a very generalized question, I know. But um, this is not going to be it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be something like a red breast 21 year old that used bourbon cask and sherry cask. If I had to go do a pure bourbon cask, ooh, I'm gonna have to think about that. I don't really know at the moment. Hmm. All right, thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of American and Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Very rare, very exotic. And you will find my videos being published on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please like, please subscribe, please tell others about this crazy American over here in Germany tasting whiskey you'll probably never ever see. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.